think a lot of people are walking through here, people that have perhaps never thought about engaging with uh, or thought about nature and in a different way. So there is passing traffic and they may just hear the odd word sort of filter into their awareness as they're walking past and some people stop and sit down and enjoy some poetry. So in terms of making a difference, I think people hear different perspectives um, and it makes them think, think about it. can make a big difference. I think people going away from here will uh, have a renewed sense of, of hope and possibility um, and a sense of common cause with folks from a wide range of backgrounds and a wide range of experiences. There's a multitude of serious issues within the world that are they're all clamoring for our attention and we have relatively little time to um, respond to all the issues that really do need attention and so in order to come to the surface of, of my attention it, it may be useful to have a focused week uh, focusing on one issue to bring it to the surface. I think events like the um, Bristol Poetry Festival and the Bristol Night Natural History Festival where people can go along and listen to things that maybe put a little, uh, just one idea into their head and make them think and perhaps change their behaviour like not throwing plastic into bins uh, that can be blown away into water courses and complete the oceans, just small things. Uh, I think that's what I'm um, if anyone read me a poem about um, how important the environment is, um, that wouldn't really change my mind on anything because my mind's pretty much made up on how important the environment is to us anyway. I can hope so. There are things that we didn't know that we now do. And just any form of coming together we unite to, to hear, to do, is some, it's a call for action. That in itself is a very powerful thing. The, the festival would make a difference uh, in the sense that we're just kind of spreading awareness even if uh, you know whether people just go home and just think about what they've heard a bit more and then whether they just decide to recycle or whether they want to go out and uh, actually get involved in things out in the community uh, I think you know any kind of knock-on effect is a, is a winning effect. I mean it's, sometimes it's preaching to the converted but um, it's also education is getting people interested in things like I've, I've just been watching all kinds of people who've come to listen to poetry who might not normally uh, encounter it. There have been people queuing up to go into the butterfly tent. So yeah, it, it generates interest and enthusiasm. It, it's such a lovely space, the harbour side, that it always draws plenty of people. It was great because it brought together worlds and communities that might not necessarily cross over the arts world and the science world. And, um, going on in terms of climate change from people that really knew their stuff but it was also nice to hear kind of creative artistic interpretations of those topics from people that just normal people that, that don't know a lot but kind of kind of want to explain it in the way that they can and I found that really great just to see the crossovers between the the art forms and the, the, the kind of activists and the scientists and coming together like that. I think that um, we are not separate from nature and I think what's lovely about this event is being very integrated. I don't want to sound like a complete hippie and say being at one with nature, but yeah, I think there is something about being at one with nature. And I think, yeah, in terms of climate change, we do need to, um, yeah, listen to that and care about our planet perhaps more than we do sometimes. I think everybody should help you know, to change something. Everybody should make an effort, you know? Uh, I don't know about a poem, but if they did, I'd read it. and. Uh, yeah, like, I don't know, I'm pretty environmental. If someone performed a poem about the environment or danced naked in the countryside to promote the environment, it still wouldn't interest me. Um, I just live my life in a modest way and use what I need to use and don't spend lots of money or buy lots of extra things that I don't need. But our consumerist society doesn't encourage that. Personally, I, I think that one of the ways we need to deal with, with climate change and the issues around sustainability and the environment are to inspire people. There's so much science, there's a lot of data out there, there are a lot of facts and figures and we know that and a lot of us are paralysed because we don't know what to do about it. My hope and my aspiration is that actually by using uh, poetry, the arts generally and particularly for me, fine language that can really pull people in, 
we create new stories and we inspire people in a very different way. That firstly, to reconnect to nature is something living and something very beautiful of which we're part, but also actually to give people more hope. You know, it's, it's all positive. You know, there's there's no negative things about writing a poem. If 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 that is a way of expressing uh, a certain one's opinion, to 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 share to share that opinion with um, other people, then you know, go for it. I you know, there's why not? Well, on the level of you know, the fact that so many people have come and so many people will now think about what they've heard and um, hopefully act on what they've heard. You know, that is bound to make a great deal of difference. Um, I think one of the differences you can make is that it, it makes poetry more accessible. So poetry isn't something that the institutions and libraries. Poetry is out on the street and the world and it's celebrating the natural world, which is a very important thing to do at the present moment in, in our society. It's uh, nature's um, misused, abused and neglected. So.